Hi, good morning guys. Today we can see allograft rejection. Allograft, it is occurring between genetically different individuals of the same species. So, the chance of rejection is very high because the histocompatibility antigens of the donor and the recipients will be different. So, the immune response will be elicited and the graft will be rejected. These alloantigens, that is the antigens of the allograft, they can exist, elicit both cell-mediated and humoral immune responses. The rate of allograft rejection, it is varying according to the tissues involved. We have already seen in the previous class that skin grafts are more easily rejected or more fastly rejected than organ grafts. We have already seen first set rejection and second set rejection, graft rejection specificity and immunological memory in the previous class. Next we can see the main reasons behind the rejection. One important reason for rejection is the difference in antigens. The main antigens responsible are MHC antigens and blood group antigens. Tissue typing procedures are available to screen the donor and recipient cells to avoid the graft rejection. The main screening procedures available are ABO blood grouping and HLA typing. Initially, the donor and the recipients, they are screened for ABO blood grouping compatibility. We have already learned ABO blood group compatibility testing in the previous classes. If the blood groups are compatible, next we have to go for an HLA typing. And this HLA typing, it is done for the potential donors and the recipients with the help of a test called microcytotoxicity test. The main test involved in HLA typing is microcytotoxicity test. The main steps involved are WBC of the donors and the recipients they are added into separate wells of microtiter plate. Antibodies specific to these MHC alleles are added into the wells in the next step. And the monoclonal antibodies are chosen for microcytotoxicity testing. After incubation, complement is added to the wells. If the antigen antibodies are specific, they bind to form antigen antibody complex so that the complement come and bind resulting in complement mediated lysis. And this cytotoxicity, if it is present or the lysis, it is assayed by the uptake or exclusion of various dyes by the cells. Here we are using a vital stain that is, this stain can be uptaken by dead cells. Examples are tripen blue or eosin Y. If the MHC allele is specific for the antibodies, we have already said that if the antigen is specific for antibody, complement command bind resulting in complement mediated lysis so that the dead cells will take, take up the dye. This thus the microcytotoxicity testing indicates the presence or absence of various MHC alleles. This can be performed within a few hours so it can be used in emergency conditions. This is the diagrammatic representation that is, is a donor cell, recipient cell, antibody is added on incubation. This monoclonal antibody, if it is specific, it go and bind to the antigens resulting in antigen antibody complex. The next step, complement is added. Complement, they come and bind to this complex resulting in complement mediated lysis. As a result, the cells, dead cells, they start uptaking dye. If there is no lysis, there is no dye uptake. So this can be used for detecting the presence or absence of various MHC alleles. Another test is mixed leukocyte reaction. This can be used for quantifying the degree of class 2 MHC compatibility between the donors and the recipients. Because class 2 MHC molecules are highly important because they are responsible for the activation of T helper cell response. Lymphocytes from the donors, they are treated with mitomycin C. This treatment is done to prevent the cell division of the donor cells. These lymphocytes are then added to cells from the recipients. If the class 2 antigens on the two cell populations are different, the recipient cells, they start proliferating. As a result, they uptake large amount of or large quantity of radioactive nucleotides into their newly synthesized nuclear DNA. 
the amount of radioactive nucleotides uptake is roughly directly proportional roughly proportional to the mhc class 2 differences between the donor and the recipient it gives a better indication of the degree of t helper cell activation generated in response to class 2 mhc antigen of the graft the test is very effective but one drawback is it takes several days to run the assay even after abo blood grouping or abo typing and hna typing this graft can be rejected so for the complete or successful transplantation we require some degree of immunosuppression also this immunosuppression it is employed in the form of immunosuppressive drugs to the recipient next we can see the steps involved in graft rejection the rejection it is principally mediated by cells the main type of reactions occurring are delayed hypersensitivity reaction and also cell mediated cytotoxicity the process of rejection involves two stages first stage is sensitization phase and the second stage is effector phase in sensitization phase we can see cd4 plus and cd8 plus t cells that is the two major subpopulations of t cells that is t helper cells and t cytotoxic cells they can recognize allo antigens on the surface of the graft response is produced against major and minor histocompatible t allo antigens most of the t helper cells are activated by apcs different populations within the graft can also function as apc the major APCs in the graft are dendritic cells. Host APCs can also migrate to the graft and can present the antigen to the T helper cell resulting in the activation of T helper cells. In some graft, a population of donor APCs can be seen. It is called passenger leukocytes and these passenger leukocytes from the donor they migrate to the regional lymph nodes of the host. That is, in some graft, we can see a special population of donor APCs. That is, the, it's a donor APC and it is called passenger leukocyte. It migrates from the donor or from the graft to the regional lymph node of the host. Passenger leukocytes are dendritic cells and can express high levels of class 2 MHC molecules so that these passenger leukocytes are also recognized as foreign molecules and again activation of T cells occurs. Other APCs involved are Langerhans cells and endothelial cells lining the blood vessels. Next we can see the effector stage. In the effector stage we can see this is the APC or the antigen presenting cell. The main antigen presenters in transplantation immunology is dendritic cells. So here we can see the dendritic cell it is processing the antigen and presenting the antigen to T helper cell population. As a result, various cytokines are produced. Interleukin 2, interleukin 4, interleukin 5 and interleukin 6 are produced. This inter they can mediate various reactions. Interleukin 2, it mediates the delayed type hypersensitivity reaction. And interleukin 2, it can also activate CD8 plus T cytotoxic cells. And interleukin 2, it can also activate another category of CD4 plus T cytotoxic cells. And interleukin 2, 4, 5 and 6, it can activate B cells resulting in the proliferation of B cells. This occurs in the first step. In the next step, we can see that these cells, it can produce, that is this activated T helper cells, it can produce Various cytokines that is interferon gamma and interferon beta are two cytokines and this interferon gamma it can activate macrophages. These macrophages they start producing lytic enzymes and these lytic enzymes go and destroy the graft. This is the graft, this brown colored region it is the graft and here we can see interferon beta it can activate cytotoxins resulting in again graft destruction. This interferon gamma and beta together, they can increase the MHC expression of the graft also. Then, in the next stage we can see this CD8 plus T cytotoxic cells get activated resulting in the production of effector cells that is CD8 plus C cytotoxic T lymphocytes. These cells, 
they can act on the graft resulting in the membrane damage of the graft similarly cd4 plus cytotoxic cells can also that is cd4 plus tc cells get activated resulting in the production of a category of cells called cd4 plus cytotoxic t lymphocytes they can also cause the lysis of the graft then in the next stage we can see the b cells b cells they start proliferating and they start producing plasma cells plasma cells they produce antibodies these antibodies they along with complement they can cause the lysis of the graft that is complement mediated lysis we can also see adcc mediated by natural killer cells and macrophages and the result it will be the complete destruction of the graft so that we can see the main cells involved are antigen presenting cells mainly dendritic cells then t helper cells then cytotoxic t lymphocytes mainly cd4 plus and cd8 plus category and also b cells these b cells they produce antibodies resulting in antibody mediated lysis and also adcc therefore the main reactions are delayed type hypersensitivity reaction and also cytos cytotoxicity reactions then antibody mediated lysis that is adcc and also antibody plus complement mediated lysis and the final result is the complete destruction of the graft and graft rejection these are the various steps hope you all understand this session we can see the various clinical manifestations and different types of clinical transplantations and various immunosuppressive therapies which are used in transplantation immunology in the next class hope you all understand this session thank you have a nice day